Good morning, everybody. How are you this morning? I'm unfortunately unable to see comments um, or reply to comments or see if anybody's watching. Facebook is being very naughty this morning and uh, not letting me do what it should let me do, which is quite frustrating. Um, I will try to check in on other devices um, to see if anybody's there or commenting. So I'm not being rude. I can't tell at the moment. It's being hidden from me. But we're going to draw eyes today. It's Thursday the 10th of December. And it's lovely to have your company today. Now, Jackie's still not here yet. Um, she's encountered a few issues. So um, it's me on the shop floor and online. So if I do get customers, I will have to run down. And so I know you're all understanding. Um, and you know how difficult things are um, for us at the moment. Obviously, since, since we lost Sandra um, back in June, um, it is just me and Jackie and uh, I can't afford to replace anybody so it is sort of uh, all hands on the deck to uh, do what we can, how we can. But that's fine. So yeah, eyes. Mm, a nice big eye. Now, the reason why we're going to do, imagine that reference on your page. So the eye is going to be almost the size of the palm of your hand, the whole the whole of your hand, let alone the palm of your hand. And the reason why I've decided to go massive with the eye Oh where have I gone? Am I still there? It's all right. I've, I don't know if I'm there or not. Um, my mouse has gone funny. And I don't know if I'm live. Hang on a minute. Am I here? Oh, thank you. Right now, I've got I've got an unusual thing happening now. Good, I I um uh, th my mouse went and shot off and crossed out the the whole Facebook. Thank you, Marie. Um, I've got an thing hello, Janet. I, Good. Okay. I, um, I'll turn the sound off that and um. I'm sort of able to see comments, but the screen is totally all to pot. Anyway, I'll carry on regardless. Okay, now I know I've got somebody here. I'm going to move my mouse because my elbow made it go funny. <coughs> and uh, shut up. So the reason why um, we're going big is because... When you do something that you find tricky, not just you particularly, but people in general, when you do something that you think is particularly tricky, you make it small. Because in our brains, we think, oh, if I do it small, then I can keep it out of the way and, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. However, what that does is it means that you're creating far more detail on an already difficult subject. And I've, I've taught in primary education and they do exactly the same thing. You get a big piece of paper and somebody does it usually in the middle. Um, but we do it really tiny because we panic and we don't want to fill the space. <clears throat> so, yeah, difficult eyes. 
They are the windows of the soul, but hopefully I can um, give you a good um, indication of how to do them. But if you notice, let's have a look at a bigger version of the, the photograph. I want you to look at a few things. Um, the whites of the eye are not white. They're grey. In fact, the brightest bit of paper, the brightest bit is the light source in the reflection of the window in the eye. Um, and it's, it's a blind. Um, so if you notice that, um, if you look how white that bit is in the middle um, it's not as white as the rest of the eye there is a tiny bit of moisture on the lower um, lid um, which is also white um, if you print it out you'll be able to say um, to be able to see um, the difference in in tones um, so that's important. We often will do the whites of the eyes white because we know they're white, but nobody's eyes are that white ever, even in real life, especially in photographs. Um, so it is quite difficult to um, work on uh, this. I mean, in watercolours, we've done eyes, um, and I think I have done one drawing of an eye, but they're beautiful to do. Now, what's really interesting is the... Um, the flecks around the pupil are actually gaps in the muscle of the iris. Um, I've, I've seen photographs of close-ups of eyes and it looks like some weird alien landscape or underwater creature um, with their mouth, the way the pupils shrink and contract, because obviously it's all to do with muscles. Um, it's amazing. So we're going to go big. We're going to go big today and we're going to talk about eyes i'm not a, an optician I, I i don't study human anatomy but we know that um we've all got eyes so we're going to look at it as a as a perfect um artist's version of an eye not an anatomical version of an eye so we're going to create what we can see uh, but we do need to have a little bit of understanding the important thing as well when i've taught an eye class over previous years a lot of people don't realize how thick, if you like, the skin is of the eyelid. You can see on that bottom lid um, in the reference picture that it's quite thick. The eyelashes start on the outside of that lid, not on the inside. It's the same as the upper lid, however, but because they curve forward, they look like they're coming from, from inside the eye. But obviously that wouldn't work because it would cause a lot of irritation. Um, so it's going to be quite an interesting lesson today. Eyes are lovely to do. I think we did um, a full lesson once on doing animal eyes a long time ago. I dug out all of my sketchbooks. I've got I've got sketchbooks going back from two thousand and seventeen um, that I've done only with pencil or coloured pencil classes. Um, since that time, so that would be at the various art groups I've taught at and. Uh, Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning sessions. So I've got lots of um, different things in those sketchbooks and lots of animal eyes. And um, we did a lesson once before we recorded, um, before we recorded them, on different human eyes. In in that we did a pair. I don't, did you do that one, Janet? We did a pair of um, older person's eyes. Uh, a woman, an older, a young woman's eyes and a child's eyes. And we were looking at what makes a child's eye look like a child's eye or an adult eye look like an adult eye and an older eye, apart from the wrinkles, look like an older eye. It's very, very interesting to, um, to look at and discuss. But we're going to stick to one eye today. I think that's, I think one is enough. Don't you? Right, now, the eye itself, the iris, I'm going to put in the middle, and it's roughly four fingers. Now, I was just, it's about four fingers wide, 
four fingers high. Now I'm just frantically running around. The, well, I'm not running. I don't run. Um, I'm looking for something that's about that big. And I wonder if the inside <clears throat> is about... Oh, gosh, it is. It's exactly the inside of... Almost exactly, that's amazing, of the inside of this roll of sellotape. So I'm going to draw it. That can't be that size. Gosh, it is. I've got my printout here, and it is that size. Right, so that's going to go... Is it in the middle? I don't want it. It is smack bang in the middle of the page, this iris. So I'm using the 2B or an HB, depending on... Um, do oh yes Janet you're right the elephant eyes <clears throat> we, we did them didn't we and then we all had to see if we could guess what eyes they were from the pictures. Yes, I remember now. So I've got my pupil, well, my iris. My iris, not my pupil. Um, and the, the pupil is roughly the size of my little finger. Now I need to try and get that. Well, not my little finger, my index finger. It's about the same sort of width. I haven't got anything round. Oh! I have actually. If I, I think that's about right for my paint tube. The hardest thing is trying to get it central. I think that will do. So there's lots of things to think about here. And the first one is that unless you're walking around constantly in surprise, you do not see the whole of the iris at any time. My dad had very small irises, actually, um, and you often saw white around the eyes. He looked constantly startled or angry, um, my dad. Um, <clears throat> as he got older, it was all right, because as, as gravity took hold, it sort of um, sagged his lids a little bit, and it was uh, it, he had a much more normal-looking eye. But... Um, if you if we look at the photograph that uh, around about a pencil width of the top is missing but the bottom sitting right on the lid <clears throat> so again the whites of the eye are about two fingers out now this is my two fingers but that doesn't include the corner of the eye the pink bit this is the white bit so if i can and they're lower than halfway they're lower than the pupil i might have to get that phone because we haven't got any jackie as i say let me just try and get this done really quickly And then it sort of like goes to that sort of shape. We'll be back in one second. Are you are you are you in the Thursday group? Are you a member of the Thursday morning group? Are you group on Thursday morning. Right, what I can do is let me see if I can tag you in the lesson. And then it will alert you that you can then find the link. Alright, I'll see if I can do that. Um, but I've got no Jackie this morning, so it's uh, 
No, I'm doing. I'm doing it now. I've done it now. Right. So I've tagged you. So you should get a notification that you've been tagged, and then you'll be able to find. Um, you should be able to find the group and find the lesson. All right. No problem. Oh, the the um the gateway, the gates and the yeah. That was lovely. Yeah. Would you like to join us? All right. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. No problem. Fine. Fine. Right, so we've got our eye. So that's not the corner of the eye. The corner of the eye is a is another thumb width beyond. It looks a bit like a penguin in flight with a round wing at the moment. Just trying to see the shape. And actually, I'm going to go. I can't give you a measurement for this. Because um, I haven't got anything to hand to know what sort of width it is. But half a pencil width gives you that lower, thicker skin. Try and do it like I'm going heavy because of um so you can see if i was doing it the the, the uh, lightness that i want um you wouldn't be able to see it at all the baggy bit well it's not the bag this is the the lower lid is about two finger width and it's uh, under the eye, under the iris. It's about two fingers. So we just draw it. So we're planning the area before we do the shading. I think that's the best way, always. We'll look at the upper lid. It always looks a bit weird at this point. Um, we'll look at the upper lid, which has different widths. Right, let me let me work out. So the mid above the iris is about for me about a finger. To the left of the eye, it's about a thumb, and to the right of the eye, it's about a little finger. So we've got a slight narrowing as it comes down level almost. Very sketchy, because it's a drawing, don't forget. We're allowed to be sketchy. I also think I've got a customer, so I will have to run down. I don't, I've just had word from Jackie. She won't be here for about another 45 minutes. I'll be back in a second. It'll give you a chance. I'm going to turn the lamp off because I don't actually think it's helping. That's better. You can see that much more clearly, can't you? Be back in a minute.
I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Sorry. Sorry, 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 I'm back. Okay, so we've got the very, very basis. We ought to sort of indicate the eyebrow, which is about two fingers on the left over three fingers on the right because it comes off the page. So it sort of is about there. Sort of like that. Now, it's all very vague. I'm going to rub out that part of the iris now because we don't need it. Now, I've got I've got my lovely smudgy stick, my tortillon, which I got from one of the sets that we sell. I'm just trying to make it... I want to do too dark, you see, that's that's the thing. Obviously, the iris is the darkest part in that. So I'm just going to lightly shade that in with my HB because it will help. Now, I don't know, do any of you have any embossing tools with your biro lid? Because it will just be a little bit easier to do some of the finer highlights of this just trying to find it Right, so what I'm going to do with this is actually emboss, I better put another bit of paper underneath. No, I'm not going to emboss too much. The, the highlighted bits, you can see on the pink, tri I'm going to call it a pink triangle, the corner of the eye, the tear duct, that's the word I'm after Barry, that's the word. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit here and there, because what will happen is as we emboss I might do there's a few bits in the eye there's a crease up there where there's a few little reflections of light from the skin and I don't want it to stand out much not at all but I'd rather have it and colour it in later than not have it and sort of um wish I had. I'll just do a few little lines and dots where the lighter areas are as well. And uh, sadly you can't actually see where I'm doing this. So I do apologise, you've just got to trust me. Um, I'm actually going to draw the, um, the, the light area which kind of comes like that and then there's another bit there I don't know if you noticed but you can see the eyelashes reflected in that um, area as well <coughs> that I've seen beautiful paintings and drawings done of eyes um, a very emotive ones actually where you've got the eyes of an old person but in the reflection you're seeing them as a young person um, and it always gets me because I've, I've done a lot of singing in uh, care homes, dementia specialist care homes and, and that kind of thing. And I remember the first time that I went to one to sing, I really had to stop myself from, from getting emotional at the, the people who were once maybe brilliant minds who are just sitting in a vacant state. And uh, I find it so upsetting but then when I sang a song that they knew they were up they were dancing and swaying along and they knew all the words and then as soon as the song finished they were back again um so those kind of pieces of art uh always speak to me 
where you can see the reflection of, of a former their former self, if you like, in the eye. Um, so uh, there's a lot you can do. You know, you can you can. I mean, we know she's looking. She, I think it's a she, is looking out of the window. Um, Because we can see the blinds and looking at a chair, I think, because of the the shape of the. Um, I think it's more of a curve that way. It's actually closer to the eye than that. Can I get rid of that and bring it a little bit closer to the pupil? So we've got late night shopping in the town on um, on Thursday. Not, not tomorrow. Not to know. That's today. Not today. Thursday the seventeenth. Next Thursday the seventeenth. Slightly darken the edge of the iris. Still only using the HB or the 2B, depending which range of pencils you've got. Now, I don't know if you can see this on the photograph. And I've never really thought about it. And I've, I've noticed it in dog's eyes more so. But the we tend to draw the iris as if it's stuck onto the white of the eye. But it's not. It's part of it. It's pigmented of the white of the eye. And let me just quickly click onto the reference image if you look where the greeny gray of that eye meets the white there's not a solid line it's slightly hazy so we need to remember that and i'm actually going to go sort of radial from the pupil out into the iris just just to give me a bit of an indication So at the moment it's looking a little bit GCSE. And that's all right. We'll, we'll start to make it a bit more A-level in a minute. Um, and then maybe degree level if we can. Right. I'm going to use my, my smudgy stick. This is not a pencil. This is just a really dirty paper stump. Um, and I'm going to shade. I'm just going to use it to smudge some pencil. Um, look how dark the white of the eye is on the right hand side. really dark and then it's a little bit lighter we need to take take it off white so you could just smudge it with your finger if you haven't got a paper stump i do recommend you get them you can just buy them singularly or we sell them in a for 6.99 i think we've got a set of different sizes you get a putty eraser a sandpaper paddle to sharpen pencils and things. You get a, a chamois leather to smudge. You shove your finger in it and smudge that way. Um, and um, you get an eraser shield, which, which is one of these. They're brilliant. I could use one if I accidentally um, smudge over that white, that circle of light. I could just place it over, and. Um, then I've got an erase, raise it out, and then I've got it again. So let me just soften 
the edge of the iris as well. Now, there's so much that we can discuss today and observe with the eye. There really is. I'm going to bring this shade in right over the top of the iris too because the eyelid casts the shadow. And don't worry, at, at the moment it looks, oh, I've got another customer, it looks a bit weird. But um, we need to take that white off. So mine is slightly off white now, which is better. I'll be back in a minute. They've told me they're in heaven and they're happy browsing, so um, I'm going to let them have a good old look. Um, so we need to start slowly building up the depth, and it is just the light bits. The very bright white lights of reflected light that we can see. I'm going to use my HB just to tint that pink bit a little more. So a little bit more pressure, and that will bring out the highlights and right in the corner it's a bit darker and as you say it's all of these little things that start to make a difference darken the edge of that eye now if you haven't got a range of sketching pencils you won't get as far as you possibly could um, I'm gonna lightly this pink bit of the eye needs to be darker than the light of the white of the eye so that means the skin tone is going to actually have to be really much darker than you think. I remember my art teacher when I was at school always used to moan at me because I never did much dark. 
with my portraits. And obviously I thought I knew more than him. When you're 14, 15, you do, don't you? And um, I never bothered. But looking back, all of my faces looked transparent. And the reason they look so transparent is because I never put any skin tone on. I left it the colour of the paper, um, which it, it can't be. So if if that might be a little bit too dark, I've done that. But let's just say that that is what it is. I'm going to have to go even darker for the shaded part of the skin tone. To get that right. If, let's say, I've gone too dark, I can just dab it with the putty eraser. And it lightens it a fraction. So here, I'm trying to map in some of the darks. We will stop for a cup of tea in a minute, or gin, whichever you feel you need. There are lots of fine, fine hairs on this face, and, I, and I'm not going to put them in. Um, we're not after photorealism today, but we are after an element of realism. So at this point, it gets a bit lighter than the dark pink. And it's going to look odd until we've got eyelashes. And a pupil that doesn't look like a ghost or a zombie. See, I use the smudgy stick for a lot of stuff. Um, but it's really nice to, to do this with you, to, to go through nice and slowly to do one eye. So if we were going to do a portrait, let's say you decided, I want to do a portrait, you'd have to do this for both eyes. That's the same sort of level of detail that you need to see in some work like that. Now, there is a cast shadow, so technically that should be a little bit darker there and even darker there. Starting to um, it's starting to look a little bit like something. Yep, yeah, still using the same pencil. I haven't I haven't switched yet. I'll let you know when I switch. I, I, it's a bit like with watercolours. I like to build up slowly because then at least I feel I've got a bit of control. I'm pressing down a bit harder with it. Because what you've got to think of, and we don't think much, is this is a fold of skin, your eyelid. So you want it to start off dark within the fold and then gradually lighten as you get outside the eyelid towards the iris. So you take the pressure off a little bit. There's a lot of tonal changes in an eye. A lot. Now this part is a bit lighter, so I'm not going to put hardly any pressure on, but it does need to have pressure and then this part of the eyelid the upper eyelid is dark again because of the shadow being cast and if you wanted to that's when you can use your smudgy stick as I call it your tortilla or paper stump to make a difference but you know once you know how to use a pencil and you've learned how to vary pressure you can do quite a lot with just one pencil as with everything, it's knowing how. It makes life a bit e harder if uh, the darker you go. But I like to go as dark as I can with this. And then I know I can um, 
start planning the next grade or two of a pencil. Now, I have a habit of aging people. I find it very hard to um, do youthful eyes. So for me, this is a really good challenge also. Um, so that's all dark. here and it stays quite dark till about here doesn't it because this outer lid sort of like the the top of the eye the bit that on my eye is quite hooded um, also has to grade out because it's a fold. If you think of a hmm, let's do this scrap bit of paper gold. If you think of a sort of eye wrinkle that we're looking at, it's not a fold as such. It's a bit like that. So you can see that the top fold casts a shadow. Now this is strong light. Um so that would be the eyelid underneath and this would be the eye on the, the hooded bit on top but can you see that if i curve that which it is in real life that also has subtle grading from dark where it meets the wrinkle or the fold of the eyelid up to where the eyelid would go so it's thinking of wrinkles more like i think of wrinkles like fabric it folds in exactly the same way so this is lighter above the fold but it still has to sort of have some form of gradation because as we get towards the corner of the eye um, towards the nose you can see that that is such a lot darker again now i'm trying to be slightly circular in my movements i don't know if you can see that i'm not going up down up down up down i'm sort of doing it in a loop or an oval and that just creates a bit of skin texture and it stops it from being very heavy lines and it does get much darker than this but again as I say we're going to start off dark start off light sorry it would help if I could speak English wouldn't it we're going to start off light and gradually get darker by switching <coughs> The, the, the softness of pencil so we've got quite a big eye to fill we've got a bit of a line there and a bit of a line there and the same there <coughs> and don't forget I'm not after photorealism I'm just after something that will look like an eye when I'm finished I hope So currently I've got quite a lot of white space. I'm going to have it a bit of a vignette so it sort of um, fades out. around the edges I think um, it 
it is a thing of draw what you see and I know people find that tricky Okay, because if we can get this basis done, then we after after a cup of tea, we can start looking at um, switching up to a slightly darker grade of pencil, because we need to sort of smooth all of this out and across now. Again, following the contours where possible. So we have no white skin, no paper left. So where there's no shading, the paper stump will be giving a lighter tone. Where there's a lot of shading, the paper stump will give a deeper tone. And by working from light to dark, it's much, much easier to be able to um, rub out. Because we're only using an HB kind of thing. It's easier for us to erase if we go too dark too quickly. Whereas if we switch to a heavier pencil, we're going to struggle to erase because it stains the paper rather than... A bit darker down here, isn't it? I do love a paper stump. I think they're the most wonderful invention because you allow it allows you to put more pressure on um, than you can with your own fingers. It kind of. Kind of does something, doesn't it? I don't want it too stripy because that's what will make the eye look older. And we've not gone, you know, we've not gone dark yet. This is still the same um, tone that we had to begin with. build up and build up the depths oh I have a customer I'll be back shortly then we'll have coffee um, I might make me a cup of while we come back so I hopefully it'll be about five past ten past eleven and then we can get darker be back in a minute
even bringing me a birthday gift. How lovely. That's really lovely. Right, I'm going to put the kettle on and uh, have a cup of tea. I'm back, everybody. Comfy, cosy. Right, I'm going to go a little bit darker now. Probably a, a 4B, maybe 3B, 4B, something like that. Again, I want to build up slowly. I just have to work out which of these worn-out pencils is a 4B, 3B. Okay, we'll go with that. And I'm going to darken the dark. a little bit lighter there slightly dark I, d I always whisper when I want to go slightly dark isn't that weird and then the um, the underside of that lid is a little bit darker It's a lovely children's book, and uh, it's it's about the teacher reading it rather than the the actual story itself. And it gives you um, like commands to do because like if it's if it's in capitals you have to shout it, and if it's in small tiny letters you have to whisper it. And it's it's really funny, really funny. The kids love it because teacher looks like a 
a fool. I'm going a bit darker in the corner of that eye. I tend to use my pencils more on the edge than on than on the point. I'm going to darken the pupil, even though I will be darkening the pupil more with a 9B to get the dark. It's scary when you do this because it's it it can become a not a circle. Very very easily. You go around the edge of the eye. Pencil more on its edge as well. Don't forget we don't want it to feel stuck on. We want it to feel part of the eye itself. Oh, it's my birthday on Sunday, just in case you didn't know. Um, it's not today. I'm doing a class on Sunday as well. I'm doing a class on my birthday. It nearly happens every year, actually. Um, because uh, I teach every day, don't I, almost? <clears throat> and if it lands on a Sunday, it's always the second Sunday of the month, which is when I teach. Right, so we're building up. Now I am actually going to do this sort of zigzag from the iris out. slightly lighter so this is all the same pencil now we've got, I've got a I've got a 3b which is the equivalent of a 4b it's confusing pencil grades are confusing they are I can't pretend they're not Be a little bit darker here. Feels weird not making a cup of tea at 11 o'clock for Jackie. Hope she's alright and she'll be in soon. Um, I haven't even bought any, she hasn't left me any biscuits. I can't, so I can't even eat those. Hmm. I often eat the biscuits that are left over and then have to say, oh, well, you know, I had to eat them because they'd have gone soft overnight. Hmm. I'll still be using the smudgy stick in a min. got to soften we don't want hard edges um, when it comes to the lower lids it's got to feel all the area around the 
eye where it meets the nose. Got to feel soft and light because, you know, we're not robots. Our skin isn't hard edged and planes. It, it's smooth. And we need to remember that as we as we work. That needs to be shaded even more here. I haven't, I haven't done it with the 3B, so I will. Paper stump. Build it up. We've got loads of time, so that's fine. And we'll be getting darker with each layer. So certain parts that we do will look lighter that we started with originally but none of it will be white other than that funny shape that we've got there um, where you can see the blinds I think I don't know if I'm going to draw blinds I think that might be one step too far I don't know I think that dark part of the eye uh, the white of the eye there needs to be darkened a little getting there it's getting there it's getting somewhere anyway isn't it I don't think he's gonna win any awards It's amazing that the white of the eye now looks paler, which was the plan. It looks paler because we've gotten um, we've gone darker. Now, if you wanted to with the two B or something, you could um, just do some loose scribble near the tear duct to make it feel. Or either edge to feel like the, th the thready veins of the eye and again we're not going we're not going full on um, realistic photographic hyper realism that's what they call it now hyper realism that's a bit darker there the white of the eye I'm just looking and seeing that this whole side is darker, but uh, it's still got the really dark bit in because the light is clearly coming from the upper left hand side. I'm going to lightly use the smudgy stick. in the iris to start tinting <coughs> I've gone over my 
light area. It's getting there, isn't it? It's getting like an eye. Um, as with everything, it's the darks that will really make it. So we've got to go even darker, even darker, even darker. And then look at the eyelashes. So maybe a 7B, um, or do I go straight for the 9B now? Have I got enough? No, let's try a 7B if I can find it. There we go. Oh, do you know what I have? I've gone over that circle. I can show you what to do with an, an, a, a, set of, a rubber template now. There you go. I've got my circle back. Excellent. It's a little bit smaller, but that's all right. We can cope with it. Darker there, a bit darker than the fold. You'll get to a point, a bit like with pastels, where you'll almost not be able to build up much more colour. And that's fine. I'm saving the um, the really darks, the eyelashes, the eye uh, pupil, and the eyebrow lines are going to be nine um, B. So I'm just adding a few more flecks with this seven B.
like so. Oh, the bird song, you know. I've forgotten all about the bird song. That's That must have finished at uh, about 20 minutes ago. I suddenly notice how quiet it is. I think I might need to darken some of the shading on the lower lid again on the right hand side. <coughs> I think. So what I constantly do when my hands aren't drawing, I'm referring all the while to my screen, screen reference image and um, drawing that I've done just to see what level of more depth I might need to add um, that kind of thing I'm not playing solitaire or Minesweeper. I could never do Minesweeper anyway, to be honest. I don't think anybody knew the rules of that. I'm on a new sketch pad now. I started it last night. No, not last night. Tuesday night. Getting, I still think, oh, I don't know. Ah. Yeah, I think it definitely needs the darks and the eyelashes and the eyebrows will make it look better. Well, this I've I've got I can show you. Cuz I found them all out. Fortunately, I date the fronts of them. Um 
And I never used to, until we started doing the drawing classes more regularly, I never, because uh, if you remember, the drawing class used to be fortnightly. Um, so it took a long time to, the Wednesday afternoon drawing classes took a long time to fill a sketchbook. Uh, and we started those in, two, I, I started doing it more regularly in 2017. So I've got my 2017 sketchbook, uh, which isn't the full year. And that's back from when I was teaching in Farthinghoe as well. Then I've got 2018 book one, 2018 book two. Oh, where's 2019's gone? Maybe I've, I'm a year out. Well, isn't that funny? I must have got confused. To what, what year are we in now? We're 2020, aren't we? Oh. I don't know then and now I've got two in 2020 and then this one which will just have three or four in for this year um, so I've actually got two, three, four I've got five sketchbooks but I'm concerned about 2019 I think I've got 2018 written down Instead of 2019, I might be a year out. The trouble is, everything just melds into one, doesn't it? I'd have to check that I've got these numbers right. So maybe I only started doing them in 2018. weird i'm going to check that later you know in between classes that's what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to go through my old class listings and see uh if i can pinpoint the class to the actual um sketch unless i've got two sketchbooks missing which is highly possible but i doubt it although i tidy things away all the time and i can never find them right i'm going with a 9b now and I've had to crack open my new 9B. That'll give me a nice dark pupil. Gosh, I so love this 9B. It's just beautifully soft. And it gives the blackest black I can get without using black. I think I'm going to do a bit of dark under the eye here on the iris. If I've lost my circle, let me. It turns out I've drastically lost my circle. That's better. Bring it back. Now, I think that window area, if you like, to really stand out. The 9B will smudge more than any other pencil. And then we got the reflection of the eyelashes in that eye. Now, hmm, it's tricky because it is a blind. Now I might switch very quickly to my old HB or 2B 
because there's a line that comes down there which is a gap between the blind and then if I do it that way I've created that gap so I've got that area of the blind in you can see how much brighter that glow is now we've started adding the darks in some respects I feel I need to darken the the white of the eye a little bit more because of it oh no I've got a smudge that's the trouble when you fiddle it's gonna have to be a bit of a vein now might add hmm. a lighter line in the eye um, make it look a bit moist don't know if I will or not but now I'm going to um, put in the shadow of the eyelashes Sort of like that. It's all the little things that make a big difference. then And then a little bit more. See, I think my eyelash, my eyebrow needs to come down there. And then like that and then we can look at the eyelashes And I'm actually going to start on the right hand side because they'll come from the top here of the lid and sort of like come in and then out. And it's more realistic if you can sort of like get them into a, a bit of a point so it might be two or three lashes merge Let's 
some of them go out further than the eye, eyelid line. Let's see if I can do as that one does. They come almost in points. But it gets trickier as we get the ones that are coming towards us we still get a few of the lashes that clump I don't really look at my eyelashes very often I don't need mascara or anything like that like you ladies put on sometimes um, but you want that lighter line there And it's very unclear as you get towards the right hand side, you get fewer lashes anyway. Now, obviously, if we'd done this eye much, much smaller, the issue would be how how to do your eyelid eyelashes thinly because you wouldn't be able to do it you can't go any thinner than your pencil line and that's often where people come unstuck by um doing it that way got by going small like we said at the beginning Oh, I've got a customer. I'll be back shortly to do the lower lashes. I can him in.
Hello, I am back. I'm so sorry. I ended up with a queue. I think once people see you on the shop floor, they um, they uh, they just pile in, which is nice. It's lovely, but uh, I'm conscious. I don't want to leave you just hanging. All right, let's do the bottom lashes, and then I think we're done. So I'm going to start from almost the line where that lower lid meets the edge. And they're not level. There are some that are going to be taller than others and something maybe a bit higher up and you don't have the not as full on your lower lashes as your top think I need to go any lower or any darker with this that is quite dark there but not overly So do I need to darken any flesh areas? Maybe darken a little bit more. A little bit darker under the eyebrow. I think that looks all right, doesn't it? I did say I might, might just do a sort of Hint of a line in the eye. To make it feel a little bit moist and I think I've done it too symmetrical. I've broken it up. something like that I'm not too I'm not displeased with this one I'm quite happy with how it's turned out I do think maybe I need to darken the cheek area just on that lower corner Like 
so. Yeah, I'm I'm I am pleased with that. Do you know what though, Janet? I've just seen your comment that yours you think yours is a bit too dark. I'm not sure. Um I if I were doing this again, in fact I might use the the moisture of my finger to spread the dark flesh tone around a little bit more because I only want that white bit to feel white and at the moment it doesn't. However, what you can do look how filthy my fingers are is you can see there's those little white almost like little they're not freckles, I'm gonna call them inverted freckles. And we did a bit with the embossing, but it's still not huge. And this won't take it right back. It's just little dots. Now I may have spoiled this or not, I don't know. And if I soften it with my finger, it stops them from looking so white. That's a little. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happier with that now. I think. Yes. I've really enjoyed this. Apologies for having to duck out. Jackie's just arrived, so she's um, she's now on the shop floor for me. Um, it was a bit like a tag team. I had to. As soon as I caught sight of her, there was another two people in the shop, so I've had to sort of like um, run upstairs to, to come and see you, lovely people. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I still don't feel I'm dark enough. Um, I think I'd prefer, I haven't seen yours, Janet, but I do think darker is better for something like this. And I might, because it's coming up to 12 o'clock as well, isn't it? But uh, I might just, uh, darken a few bits it, it, it's really hard to know when to um, draw the line <laughs> with pencil and I could add you know more creases and a few other things Few, just a few little lines here and there. Don't want to make them old, but I do want to make it look less robotic. I think, I think, I think I'm pleased. It's as good as it gets from me. Occasionally, I'm like, "Wow, that's amazing, Barry. Well done." Um, but yeah, I think, I think I've, I'm happy with that. I can't go any darker, but obviously, if if I quickly flip to camera two, you can see it is much darker in in um, in real life. There, you can see how dark that pupil is. It's because it's catching the light from this angle. So there we go, and thank you so much for joining me. Now, next week. 
last one next week and it's an old barn in the snow however i haven't said what medium it is and it's going to be in watercolor um it's an old barn in the snow in watercolor there's i think a lot of this week is old barn in the snow over the next couple of weeks or something barn or something snow because uh, it's winter but i threw the eye in uh for a curveball so next week is the last thursday morning class of the year and then we start again on the 7th of january with a stormy sky with lightning in pencil so that'll be quite nice um next year's morning classes on a thursday are slightly more for um formalized in that the first thursday of the month is pencil the second thursday of the month is watercolor the third thursday of the month is acrylics and then the fourth thursday of the month is gouache or charcoal or pastels or oils or something like that um so it gives a bit more format because i'm not doing i've stopped at, um after tonight my thursday evening monthly beginners watercolor class is ending i've been i've done that for two years um and to be honest i'm struggling um health wise to do um evenings and days all the time so from next year i'll only be doing monday and tuesday evenings um so the thursday morning second thursday of the month thursday evening watercolor class is being amalgamated with the thursday morning art for the anxious so that's why it's the second thursday in the morning because now we've got online people can join in any time they like um it doesn't matter if they work during the day they can do their lesson later on so now we've got the setup it, it kind of does make my work schedule a little bit easier because i I've, I've shaved 20 hours a week off you know i'm not working 72 anymore but i would like to bring it down to under 50 a week if possible um just so i can just try and learn how to relax which i find very difficult um but i actually really do need to um so yeah it, it's going to be an exciting time and then i'm hopeful that the classroom will be able to reopen um even um in easter to probably a, a smaller number uh, but now we've got the online classes that doesn't matter either so it, it's it's a really exciting time for the future with all of the classes so thank you so much for joining me this morning i i do love doing these classes and uh, and i love seeing what you create if you feel um able to share what you do so thank you so much take care have a really good weekend enjoy um december i've i've not um i've not got any freebies now for the rest of the year until january so um i'm, I'm sure i'll see some of you in other classes over the, over the coming weeks before next thursday but take care um stay safe and i'll see you all soon bye bye everybody bye bye